Hi there, and you're very welcome to the latest episode of David Icke is the Dot Connector. And without any further ado, let's welcome David Icke. How are you doing, David? I'm doing well, Rich. Really good. Now, this is not the way this normally goes, but I want to ask you a question. Um, uh, now, I've kind of got into this with you before, but I want you to get into it. You have always said to me and others that you find information through years and years of research, and you put it out there for people to look at, and people do with it what they will, or they don't do with it what they will, so to speak. Uh, and I want to ask you a question. A lot of people have asked me to ask you this, and it's been mentioned on our Facebook page a thousand times this week. In light of the ridiculous and sometimes hysterical, sometimes funny, sometimes not, sinister abuse and nonsense that's spoken about you, why do you bother with it? Um, well, first of all, uh, the abuse goes in there, doesn't touch the sides and goes out there, even if it makes it in there. Um, because if you look at a history, uh, Rich, anyone that has said anything worth hearing has faced abuse, ridicule. Look, some of the, the great scientific discoveries, uh, the people who first talked about them were ridiculed and abused. And, and it's like something new is introduced and, and it's different. And, and people kind of all kind of circle around different. It's different. What's going on? You, you know, can't, can't, be, can't be right, all that. And then a few years later, E eventually it becomes the norm, the new norm. And then another different gets um, put into the public arena and the whole thing starts again. So you have to basically come to terms with that. I mean, when I started coming out with this in the early 1990s, people have said to me, didn't you know you'd get all that ridicule? And I'm thinking, do you know I did? Yeah, I had an idea. Do you know yeah. I did? <laughs> um, but you say it anyway. Because you can um, identify yourself with your name and your body and your race and that's one way of looking at it and if you do that you can get caught in what do people think of me what's the image of me um, I don't see myself as that I see myself as infinite awareness having an experience um, which is currently called David Icke uh, but I will be as everyone else will be having multiple other experiences simultaneously, not only simultaneously, but at the same time, um, <laughs> in other um, realities, in other realities of experience. So what people think, good or bad, of this one experience called David Icke is completely irrelevant to me. Because you know what I've learned over the years? They'll think something else tomorrow. And if you um, get caught in what people are saying about you, then you um, are, are, have a tendency to stop and defend yourself. And when you do that, you're not getting on with it, are you? Oh, don't say that about me. I couldn't care less. And, you know, my approach um, has always been incessantly putting out information and new information. Boom, 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 boom. And then, you know, people over the years, so many different people, They'll go, oh, he's mad, he's this, he's horrible, um, he's Satan, he's all this stuff. And then I'm still going boom, 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 boom. And they look up, they go, where's he gone? What, see see that road. little figure over, over the horizon, there he is now. And if someone else comes in, boom, boom, incessant. And, and, and it, it um, has an effect in the end when you do that, rather than stopping and worrying about what people think of you. Because, you know, I've seen it said, um, that um, I, I will have my reputation trashed here and reputation trashed there. And I think it, it, you know, it's, it's an important you know, way of looking at this, that I don't have a reputation, so there's nothing to trash. See, what is a reputation? It's an image. That's all it is. It's how people see you, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. Now, that's their right. They're observing what you're doing, so they have um, a, a right um, to decide what they make of it. But I don't have a reputation, personally. I don't have an image. I'm not trying to say, OK, how do I want people to see me? Couldn't care less, mate. Couldn't care less. Completely irrelevant to me. Tell me I'm the, I, I, I am, you know, uh, uh, the infinite incarnate, or tell me I'm Satan, or tell me I'm something in between. Couldn't care less. You know why? Because my um, attitude to all this is to get up every morning and do what I believe to be right. And then the next morning I get up and I do what I believe to be right. Now, 
nothing is going to intervene in that process. Which means that whether people say, yeah, I think it's brilliant what you're doing, or I, I, I think you're this or that, the other, it's it doesn't the matter same. because the next morning, whatever they say, good or bad about me, I'm going to get up and do what I believe to be right. So in that sense, um, I, all this stuff about reputation and image, and whatever, it's irrelevant to me. And, you know, f for me, one of the, 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 penny, the biggest penny drops that you can have to make sense of this world is that it's, it's a madhouse. You know, there's some, I mean, more and more people are, are waking up and expanding their awareness, and that's, that's great, but still, overwhelmingly, it's a madhouse. Um, and if you um, are born into a madhouse, and you do not have any other experience, because you've lived your whole life, your whole childhood, up into adulthood, in the walls of the madhouse, um, when, um, as you, 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 you move along, that madness is your norm. It's your sanity. It's how things are. So when someone comes along, and there have been many, many um, examples through history, and says, actually, this is a madhouse. What do they call those people? They call them mad, or they call them dangerous, because um, they are challenging the status quo, which is perceived, although it's insane, to be sanity. Um, and so you, once you come to terms with that, it's really, I, I really can't express it enough. It's so important because people uh, go through um, uh, entire lifetimes trying to make sense of the world, and it drives them mad. It's like, you know, in, in The Matrix with Neo, you know, the, 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 it's like a splinter in your mind and it's driving you mad and all this stuff. Once you realize it's a madhouse, everything falls into place you start to um, realize that it ain't you that's crazy. It's, it's, it's the society that you're living in. And then comes the question, and this is um, going to take us into some deep places in the rabbit hole, I would suggest, whether people accept that or not. Why is it a madhouse? And I've been um, researching this and seeking these answers now for a very long time. And I, I, from far as I know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a, um, I, I'm kind of unique in having this view. I, I, I not because I've not seen it anywhere else. But what I concluded is this: what people call in all the different cultures, they all have this negative force, don't they? They call it the devil or Satan or, or, or whatever, Lucifer, and all these different names. What is it? It's symbolized as um, someone with a pitchfork and horns. Um, um, it's symbolized in many and various ways. My, my view of it, and like I say, I, I, it seems to be unique, but I mean, as Gandhi said, even if you're in a minority of one, the truth is still the truth, um, that this figure, this negative force, is actually an a massive energetic distortion within the reality fabric of the world that we experience. And what I mean by that, if you, you imagine there's a peaceful scene in the countryside, say the American countryside, everything's calm, everything's balanced, and then through comes a tornado. And that tornado is a mass of uh, chaos, a mass of distortion in the energy fabric of where it is. And what it does is it pulls everything towards it. Um, I mean, it, it can pull cars, anything, such as the power of them, up into the sky, into the vortex. And I say if you symbolize what we call, what people call Satan, the devil, the negative force, as literally a distortion, a massive distortion within the energetic fabric of this reality, and then go one step further, everything is consciousness. Everything is consciousness. Not everything is equally conscious, George Bush, I rest my case, but everything's conscious. So a, a schism, a distortion that I'm talking about, has a self-awareness. And I suggest that this 
energetic distortion um, took on self-awareness and is the force that is um, fundamentally destabilizing and um, distorting the world that we live in. Now, with a tornado, it's the power of the, the, the wind, if you like, that pulls everything in and attaches uh, it to, 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 the, to the tornado. In terms of this uh, distortion, it's frequency. Are you in its frequency or are you not in its frequency? If you're in its frequency, it will start to influence your behavior. And that behavior will become more and more distorted the more that uh, connection um, uh, gets uh, more and more um, strong. And interestingly, uh, Native Americans have a, have a saying which goes like this. Inside each of us are two wolves. One, they say, is evil. It is anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority and ego. And the other wolf, the Native Americans say, is what they call good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion and uh, faith. Which wolf wins, they say, the one you feed the most. Now, when you um, look at the ancient accounts around the world, they all talk about a time when there was great harmony in the world. And you know the, the Avatar movie with the, uh, the Navi, the, the blue people, and how they lived in total harmony with their environment, with nature, with each other and with, with animals, and they, they corresponded with them because you can telepathically um, communicate with animals. You don't talk to the plants, for instance. Uh, you, know, you, you don't have a conversation with them. But when you're talking, it's creating a vibrational information field which, uh, in the um, vocal cords, which, which they can decode. This has been shown the way they, that plants have responded to different words um, electrically. And so you had this harmony, this society of great harmony. Some call it the golden age. And then there was this, well, what I call in my books, this schism came along. And that word again distorted that harmony. And suddenly we were in a very different world. And if you look at what I would suggest is a, a madhouse called planet Earth or this reality that we're experiencing, it's not harmonious, is it? Parts of it are with harmonious, awake people, but it's just a mass of chaos and upheaval. It's a distortion. And so when um, you are pulled or, or manipulated or you fall into these um, emotional states like anger, sorrow, regret, greed, uh, arrogance, self-pity, all these that these Native Americans talk about, what I call low vibrational emotion, you get pulled into the frequency range of the distortion. And all, these, all this talk about demonic entities and uh, uh, the possession of people by demonic entities, what we call demonic entities are expressions of this distortion. And if we get pulled into it, and it starts to um, dictate and, and, and influence more and more our sense of perception, our sense of reality, our behavior becomes a human expression of that distortion. And, you know, this is why I don't like, quote the Bible very much, but forgive them for they know not what they do is, is, a, is a wonderful line. Uh, and I, I try, it's frustrating sometimes, and, and you... you you lose it for a few minutes sometimes out of sheer frustration. But I try to get as close to that as I can because if you are attached to this distortion, then you're basically not thinking for yourself. It's thinking for you. And there are different levels of it. Those that are absolutely caught in the distortion, they're the ones that do satanic rituals. They're the ones that sacrifice children. Uh, they're the ones that do all these horrific things. They're the ones that um, uh, pepper bomb cities of civilians and think it's, uh, it's fine. But... And you also see um, visually that when the distortion really gets hold of someone, and we, we, we call it um, 
possession of the exorcist uh, type, where the whole uh, face starts to move and change, and that, that's uh, obviously an extreme uh, form of possession. But this distortion operates in much more subtle ways um, on other people's perception if they allow themselves to fall in its frequency range. And if you look at human society, it is a holographic collective expression of the distortion. And thus, all the time, if you look at it, look at these emotions I'm talking about, these low vibrational emotions. Look how society is set up and how it's set up to constantly create experiences for people and situations for people, individually and collectively, that pulls them into that, those emotional states. And when we fall into those emotional states, we, we fall into a much stronger connection to this, to this distortion. And one of the great ways that um, you can see it, and the, one of the, the, the most profound and obvious ways that it expresses itself in human behavior, is inversion. Everything, uh, because it's a distortion, everything that it, how it expresses itself is in an inverted way. And uh, there's a quote here by a guy called Michael Elner, I've used it a few times over the years, which, which really sums up what I'm saying about the inversion of human society, which I say is caused by this um, energetic uh, schism. Uh, Michael Elner, just look at us. Everything is backwards. Everything is upside down. Doctors destroy health, lawyers destroy justice, universities destroy knowledge, governments destroy freedom, the major media destroy information, and uh, religions destroy spirituality. And you, you, if you look across human society, you will see this inversion everywhere. So you'll, uh, it's very much uh, in line with um, 1984 and George Orwell, where he had the Ministry of Truth, which was about lying to people. The Ministry of Love, which was about torturing people. And you see it in, we're going to uh, pepper bomb Libya to protect the civilians from violence. It's all inversion. Um, and, you know, you can see it e even in the People's Voices um, recent, recent experience uh, since we've been on air. The inversion. Um, this was created to um, put out information to expose the system and what's happening and give people information they wouldn't normally get. At the same time, you've had uh, people um, hacking our systems, hacking websites, um, hacking into the YouTube page and deleting all the content. And I tell you, the people behind that will be going on protest marches against the system. They will be saying, A power to the people. And yet, they are setting out to try to destroy something that was absolutely created to do exactly that. Now that is inversion. And it's an inversion of a natural order, right? If you are truly, it's your focus, you are truly wanting to make a difference and truly wanting to give people a voice, truly wanting to um, give um, the people the opportunity to see information that they wouldn't normally see, when someone else comes along and says, we're going to create this television station to do that, or someone whose focus is that, they're, 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 they're round of applause. Brilliant. That's another one, another way of getting the information out. Fantastic. You know, if someone else did what we've just done now, we'd be, we'd be applauding. Be Great, applauding. another one. Absolutely. But what happens, and after the break we'll get into why, what happens is they invert their behavior, the natural response. And they try to destroy it. Um, and, uh, you know, you have the, the, the robot radicals, as I call them, that, uh, the power to the people, uh, uh, robot radicals. There's some great people uh, uh, in that arena, but there's a lot of um, frauds and fakes as well. And then you've got other people um, who have been trying to trash the people's voice, who they'll come from another direction. We want to uh, get the information out to Middle England and all that stuff. And... And yet, we should be all supporting each other. That's the natural order. What happens is it's an inversion. And when it's inversion, the distortion has you. We'll pause there for a minute. You'll be back for the second part of David Icke Doc Connector next.
Welcome back to the second part of David Ike Dot Connector. David, just before the break, yeah. you were talking about how people who should be naturally predisposed to be um, all about a project like this mm. because of what they have done, or at least what they've perceived to have done in yeah. their own past, and yet throw all sorts of negative things at us, mm. at some of the people who work for us, at people who are connected to us. And um, you're talking about inversion. Inversion. Well, let's, let's look at this, this, this distortion, this energetic distortion that I'm talking about. You can picture it like a, if you like, like a, a tornado um, in a way. Um, th there are people who are clearly trying to protect the status quo, clearly trying to protect the system, which is an expression of the uh, distortion. That's why we have such a distorted society. Um, but this distortion manifests itself in endless different ways. Um, often even in ways that it uh, manifests as people who on the surface are challenging the system. But this is the common denominator. When something uh, comes forward or someone comes forward to really challenge the system and really expose what it is, so it's really deep in the rabbit hole, so that we can get to that point where you can actually change it, getting beyond its projection into where it's being projected from, then you see all these apparently um, opposing forces, left and right, uh, and all the others that go on, uniting in their condemnation of it. Um, and so this um, has always been going on throughout uh, history. And uh, I came across these two quotes. I, I'm not, don't let anyone think I'm saying these are applying to me. I, they're, they're applying to the point I'm making. Um, Einstein said, um, great spirits have always encountered violent opposition from mediocre minds. And Jonathan Swift said, when a true genius appears, you can know him by this sign that all the dunces are in a confederacy against him. <laughs> and if you look throughout history, that, 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 that's a, a, a common theme that goes on and on and on. So you have the um, people that say they want to challenge the system. Uh, but when something comes along to add to that challenge significantly, they turn against it. Now they have, they have to go through a psychological process of um, self-justification. When um, they are saying they stand for, for challenging the system and the status quo, and they are now um, attacking and trying to trash something that's doing that 24 hours a day worldwide, they have to justify that to themselves through a piece of mental gymnastics. So what they have to do is convince themselves that this is a bad thing, that, that bad things are happening, to justify their condemnation of it when on the surface it's actually doing what they say should, uh, uh, should happen. And so um, they have to come up with ways um, to justify that. And, and in their own fevered uh, minds, they do. And so what they've had to do with the people's voice to hold that self-justification is to ignore the content. Ignore it. You know, when you look at the amazing content that we put out that wouldn't have come out in this way otherwise since November the 25th, um, and you saw that increasing mass of uh, on-demand, um, free-to-take-and-watch content on the People's Voice YouTube channel, that was such already a, a, an extraordinary um, contribution to human understanding of across a great range of subjects There's nothing of, like it. Of, of what's actually going on Amazing. and you're not being told yeah. about. So when hackers um, go in, and it wasn't security agencies or um, military, they have things called keystroke programs. Um, and, and every time you put your password in, it, you're typing it on their screen if they want. They don't have to go looking and, and, and hacking in to get passwords because they've got all these programs. And, and so someone like that, they could take us down any time because they would know all the passwords and everything. The people who are doing it uh, have had to find the passwords. So this is not 
this is not being done in the last few weeks by by uh, military intelligence um, agencies. And that level of effort shows a real obsession. <coughs> That's it? obsession. I mean, it's a real obsession it's to go into that level of... It's an therapy. obsession to destroy. Yeah. Yeah. And forgive them for they know not what they do, because they literally are not in control of own, their own minds. Um, because I would suggest that they are being influenced by distorted um, energetic fields, therefore they are making distorted judgments and distorted behavior comes from it. So that when they um, hacked into the People's Voice um, YouTube page and cleared all the content, deleted the lot, and you know, as I do, there are volunteers out there who are volunteers who have been um, putting that content up since November the 25th. Hundreds of hours. Gone. Ago. All that work gone. Yeah. Why? Because these people don't give a damn about con content. They give a damn about feeding their own uh, bile addiction. And now those same volunteers are going through the painstaking job out there now as we speak, putting it all back again. Why? Because they're builders, not um, destroyers. And it's so symbolic that they, they clean the content out of the YouTube channel because they had to, they, they, have, uh, they physically erased it, but they have to erase it from their minds, from their perceptions, or that mental gymnastics saying, I'm going to attack something that's putting this content out, yeah. doesn't work. They can't self-justify it. Um, and um, so that in, in, is a, a, a massive inversion, which is something that you see come from uh, this distorted energetic field all the time, if you get pulled into it. And so many people are in there. Um, and so many, uh, you know, even in the alternative arena, are caught in it. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. You're too kind. You're too kind. It's in your nature. I've known you now for a few years. I've known you personally for a few months. You're too kind. In, with, with some people, it's just pure malevolence, I think. Uh, now, you have been researching it better than I have, and I'm um, you know, about to the research you've, you've done, but with some people, it's just petty-minded um, self-obsession and spite, I think. Well, when you... Uh go back to what we're talking about, what, I, what I'm talking about, um, I won't tie you with it, <laughs> about this energetic distortion, yeah. which pulls you into its frequency, if you let it. Um, what you've just described is exactly what manifests. It's malevolent. It's malevolent because it's distorted. All malevolence and, 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 and what we call evil is just a distortion of perception. Um, and what you've got is this, this, this natural order which is about love and harmony and caring for people. Um, and this distortion has turned society into a manifestation of itself. This is why you don't see uh, so, so much uh, of the time. Love, caring for people, what's just, what's fair. It's what's in it for me. And, oh, someone's upset me, I don't care about that. I'm going to crush yeah. them. Uh, and and this, is, this is the, the distortion that... that um, has got them. When people say, you know, we say the system's got someone, well, that's basically what they've got. They've been energetically uh, uh, connected and they're, they're, they're having their whole perceptions influenced. This is why when they're hurling abuse at you, um, you just have to go, yeah, well, <laughs> cup of tea, anybody? Because <laughs> forgive them they, for they know not what they do. What made me laugh over the years was, um, I think the first time we ever spoke, I said to you, you know, you've taken some hits, you know, and you said, um, yeah, but the amazing thing is, all those people who did it at the beginning, they're all gone. Then there was more, they're yeah. gone. Then there was more. You just see them off. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and you see them off because boom, boom, more info, boom, yeah. boom. Every morning, up, doing what you, you believe to be right. Uh, uh, incessantly, uh, putting content out, putting new information out. Incessantly, incessantly, incessantly. And, and the, you see them off because they, 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 they basically, you wear them out. You do frustrate your friends and family, though. Because there's been one or two occasions, we won't get into this, but a couple of months back, you'd gone back to the other white for a day. Um, a, a tabloid newspaper in this country put out a ridiculous story. It was so ridiculous, it was laughable. It was laughable for two minutes until I went, hang on a second, that's my mate they're talking about. It's not funny then. Um, and I thought, go for them. <laughs> you know. And I did say that to you, didn't I? Not just me, but your family, Sean, your friends, Mike. Go for them. No, couldn't be bothered. Couldn't be bothered. Why? Because I don't care what they say. This is the point. See, 
there's this line about being true to yourself. And that's the only person you can really be true to, because only you know what your motivations are. And, you know, so it, go back to what I said earlier. Um, you do what you believe to be right, and if you start reacting to uh, abuse and lies about you, my goodness me, I've got, yeah. I, apparently the people's voice is, is, is paying for my cocaine habit now. That's the latest. That's the bloody new one, that is. <laughs> I'll have to write that one bloody down. That's what you want to do in Marbella. <laughs> I've never been to Marbella. You, t you tell me it's the place to go. I don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah. Um, no, I mean, it, 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 it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Is any, can anyone better um, uh, feeding a cocaine habit? No. I, mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, they probably will. Because what happens is, you see, when you're going boom, 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 and you're not reacting to them, and you're not, um, you're not being affected, the way people see you, you're not being affected. Because, you see, this is the way I see it. If people read a ludicrous um, newspaper article or some ludicrous blog or some ludicrous bloody social media and they believe it, well... You, you can't do anything, you with, can't do anything with them anyway. No, no, no. And then that's the intelligent true. people will go, yeah. what a load of rubbish. So, you know, you just get on with it. But when you are incessant and you, you won't be affected, and, and people start to see, actually, it's, it's not doing the damage that, that I thought it would do. Then you up the ante. You accuse someone of, uh, 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 whether it's the station or whether it's me or whatever, you accuse them of even more extreme thing. <laughs> Same thing. Even more extreme thing. Um, so it, it, in, in the end, it's so extreme, you've lost, you've, lost the, you've lost the room because it's like, oh, come on, you know. Yeah. So, so when a guy like Stan Collymore, who used to play football, and for our American viewers, that's real football, by the way, not this nonsense that Monica likes with the oval-shaped thing. Um, you would be frustrated by uh, Stan because you couldn't understand why a guy like him would get so upset. Now, he was upset, to be fair to him. You know, I don't know anything about him. He might be a nice guy. But he was really put out by some of the stuff that was said. And you were like, well, I can't understand why he gets so wound up by it. You know, just, well, uh, uh, you, you, they get wound up. Because they're thinking of reputation, they're thinking of how can you say that about me, um, and this is, a, 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 I think, it, you know, if people want to um, not be affected by what other people think, um, they need to realise that it's not what is said about us, it's our response to it that decides if we're affected or not. You know, someone can hurl abuse. I mean, look, I mean, God oh dear. I mean, it's almost it's almost a cottage bloody industry hurling abuse at me. Um, uh, and and you can go, oh, it's terrible. How can you say that about me? Or you could go, cup of tea. Um, and the difference is whether you're affected by the same abuse or whether you're you're not. And and we we need to start realizing that it's within our power not to be affected by what people say about us, no matter how extreme it may be. Um, and to, um, to realize that um, what we're doing when we say, how can you say that about me? We're actually <coughs> thinking um, body, yeah. name, yeah. life story, instead of I am infinite awareness having an experience. And when you, you view things from that level of perception of self, whether some idiot, some simpleton, um, posts abuse on it on the internet is neither here nor there. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Gotta tell you, or what newspapers say about you. Gotta tell you this. Um, a friend, I mentioned this to you before. A friend of mine who is a very well-known lawyer at a very well-known firm in London. They handle. I've given it away by saying they handle a lot of libel cases for well-known people. Said to me before years ago in Spain. Um, your mates with David Icke, and I said, yeah, kind of, kind of know him, he comes on my programme, he's good, he's, he's great, you know, great stuff, great chat and all that. And she said, if he ever wants to have a go with some of these people, tell him to pick up the phone to me, it won't cost him anything. Because so, so much of it has been stonewalled, you know, m massive amounts of money could have been won. And I said, I can't speak for the guy, as I said at the time, as I referred to you, but I'm guessing that he would see it as a complete waste of time Diversion. where he could be yeah. doing other things boom, boom, to do with this. Boom, boom. Because that takes up a year of your time. Yeah. Two years even sometimes. And, and it, uh, it also says, yeah. I care what people have said about me. You know, I don't. I don't care. I mean, it's nice when people say, hey, I think you're doing a good job, David, and, and you know, all the best. That's really nice. But if, 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 they, if they said the opposite, 
I'd still be up tomorrow morning, boom, 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 doing what I believe to be right. And, and it's this incessant um, uh, forward movement, if you like, of um, trying to make a difference that is the only way that it's going to happen. What did someone once say? You know, it's um, persistence is what uh, changes everything, what creates everything. You know, you can have genius, you can have inspiration, but without persistence, um, nothing gets changed. How many geniuses are there in various fields of life? Yeah. How many um, really talented people could have made such a contribution to the world, but because they didn't have persistence, oh, no, you see what they've said about me now? Yeah. I'm, going, I'm going to spend more time with my family. Um, they, don't, they don't do it. And, you know, we are facing um, a... Uh, this Orwellian nightmare and then some if we don't deal with it and we aren't going to deal with it unless people are aware of what it is and where it's designed to go that you know that that's the only thing in my mind everything else is 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 irrelevant to me basically uh, in, in terms of what I do and what people think of me you know you look through history anyone's had anything to say as, as, as had all the abuse and then history says oh you were right yeah yeah all people have been burned for saying the earth is actually round. Then. Yeah, people, people like Giordano Bruno and, yeah. and, and people like that who stood up and, 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 and challenged the status quo and ended up, you know, being, like you say, being burned at the stake and, and, and all the rest of it. They, they don't uh, get away with that these days. They kind of uh, burn you in the media. But you can only get burned if you allow yeah. yourself to get burned by being affected by what he said. I mean, I, I was given this wonderful advice years ago long time ago, when someone said to me, what do you gain by winning an argument with an idiot? And the answer is, <laughs> A, you gain nothing, and B, you can't win an argument with an idiot, because the idiot never knows never when knows they've lost. They're so, you know, that, that's been my philosophy all along. Why doesn't he react to this? Well, because he couldn't care less, couldn't mate. Care less. And that's the kind of, um, uh, if you like, attitude that, that allows you to keep on this road year after year, decade after decade, without having your spirit broken by the abuse and the undermining of you that goes on. Some of it from uh, ag intelligence agencies and government agencies, a lot of it from people who um, should be with you, but uh, the system has them while they think they're challenging the system. We're going to take a break. Thanks, David. I've got to remind you, I was going to say something about catching previous episodes of um, the dot connector on YouTube, but of course they're not there, but they will be. Uh, they're going to be all put back up there. But you can also get episodes, uh, previous episodes on davidike.com. Get on to davidike.com. We'll be back for the final part of David Ike dot connector after this break. And welcome back to the final part of this week's David Icke's The Dot Connector. David, just before the break, we were talking about the, the, the damage and the harm that some people who should be on the same level of thinking as us try to do, not just to us, but to other projects like other, yours. Other projects, yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you burst through all of that? Well, in, it, it, it's the same as um, how we bring this system to an end. If we look at what I would say is a holographic world. That's like the projection on the movie screen. You ain't going to change that. How are you going to change a movie um, when it's hit the screen? It's a done deal. Um, you have to go and find out where, it, where it's uh, coming from, and that's in, in the realms of, of, of energy, the, the energetic fields from which this um, reality comes. Um, and then you uh, need to look at um, what is influencing the behavior of people, the perceptions of people which become the behavior, which become what we call human society. There's a distortion creating a distorted society. Um, and so this um, quote that I used in a previous Dot Connecting show from a, a Central American shaman called Don Juan Matos is um, very, very relevant because of what I'll, I'll come to. He is talking about um, entities that he call, they call in that part of the world flyers. In other parts of the world, they call them archons, they call them chittahuri, they call them jinn, they, and the Christians call them demons. These are distorted um, expressions of consciousness, which are expressions of the energetic distortion I'm talking about. Uh, and um, he said this uh, about what these, these um, 
these entities, i.e. expressions of this distortion, did um, in relation to human society. And he said this. Think for a moment and tell me how you would explain the contradictions between the intelligence of man, the engineer, and the stupidity of his systems of belief, or the stupidity of his contradictory behavior. Sorcerers believe that the predators have given us our systems of beliefs, our ideas of good and evil, our social mores. They are the ones who set up our dreams of success or failure. They have given, here we go, back to that Native American uh, legend or saying, they have given us covetedness, greed, and cowardice. It is the predator who makes us complacent, routinary, and egomanical by influencing our behavior, by pulling us into their frequency into, on, on an electromagnetic level. Uh, in order to keep us obedient and meek and weak, the predators engage themselves in a stupendous maneuver. Stupendous, of course, from the point of view of a fighting strategist, a horrendous maneuver from the point of uh, those who suffer it. They gave us their mind. And that is what happens when you fall into these low vibrational emotional states, uh, which the society is set up to pull us into, all this austerity and all this struggle and all the... The, the challenges that people have and what's the point and it's pulling you into this low vibrational emotional state. Uh, they're doing it through various forms of radiation as well, which um, you know, has gone up by millions in the atmosphere in, in the last 50 years. Um, and, and so that's what they want to do. And you know, I've said many times, you, you can try to find a solution to something and we're drowning in them and then they just lead to other problems. Or you can do the wise thing, which is to remove the cause of the problem. And the cause of the problem is we allow ourselves to be pulled emotionally into these low vibrational states and mentally into the five senses, which is another kind of stadium on which this distortion operates. And in doing that, we not only behave through uh, distorted perception in ways that create the society that we have we're actually feeding we're actually feeding the distortion by creating more and more distorted energy collectively by our emotional states so you know simple things you know people look at the world and they think the answers must be complex they're not it's ever so simple we love each other that's it when you when you open your heart get out of your head you open your heart and you, by doing that not just the physical heart opening this heart vortex this heart chakra as they uh, call them in the east of wheels of light you are connecting to something much greater than the brain will ever connect to it's inspiration it's intuition it is love in its true sense it's not love that says um, uh, I fancy you darling and um, let's, go down, let's go down the pub, let's go down, down the disco or whatever. Do they still have discos? I don't know, I'm too old. Uh, <laughs> they used, they used to have when I was alive. I don't remember either. Um, and it's, a, it's a, a, a love so different to the love that we call actually attraction that we have to give other names to it to emphasize the difference. One is unconditional love. I love you, end of story. Not I love you if, I love you when, I love you. That's it, end of story. And your problem is my problem. And your injustice is my injustice. Your unfairness is my unfairness. And when, and when I see a situation where the fair thing is for you to get this and that, I am not going to go in and try to get this and that because I can by manipulating the situation. I say, the fair and just thing to do is you do that. Uh, and, and that uh, love creates an energetic frequency so high compared with the distortion that never the twain shall meet. You, you stop being influenced by the distortion because you're not getting pulled into those low vibrational states which it is trying to do, to feed itself. And if we um, go through this process of opening the heart and... Uh, doing what we know to be right and loving those that abuse us doesn't mean you stand for it doesn't mean you say hey I'm not having this but you don't do it with hatred 
um, you, you, you realize, forgive them for they know not what they do. Have we ever lived like this? Well, you mentioned at the beginning of the program. Have we I th ever I lived think, like I th that? I think uh, if you if you look at the uh, common themes, Rich, of the the, the, the legends all around the world uh, of, of this society, I think we did at one point. But you imagine, like I said, let's go back to what we were talking about earlier. You've got a beautiful landscape. Everything's calm. Everything's balanced. And a tornado comes through it. That landscape ain't the same as the tornado goes through it. And our fabric, the fabric of our reality, has not been the same since this distortion, this schism came through it. Um, and the schism is self-aware. Uh, and it can self-awarely manipulate and feed itself. And when you open your heart, you cease to feed it. Because Radio 1 can only, can't connect with Radio 2, they're on different frequencies. The open-hearted, um, the unconditional love, cannot connect with the distortion because they're so far away in frequency terms. They pass through each other just like radio frequencies do. This is the answer. Um, and so when people talk about fighting for justice, fighting for freedom, oh, a great line from Tony Blair, we must fight for peace. Talk about bloody inversion. Fight for peace. Unbelievable, yeah. fight for yeah. peace. Um, Kill for peace, effectively. We don't, have to, we, we don't have to fight for anything. If we fight, then we create a, 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 a war of some level, whether it's a personal war or it's a, a collective war. We didn't need to fight for anything. We need to stop fighting. Stop fighting for justice. Stop fighting for peace. Stop fighting for everything and start being justice, being peace, being fairness, being love. And if imagine, mate, I mean, people say it's not that simple. Hold on. What if vast, vast numbers of people, far more than ever are now, interacted with each other on that basis? The world would change because the world is not some external thing, external from us. The world that we experience is the collective um, outcome of human perception and thus human behavior. And we have got into this situation now w w with human society because humans have had their perception manipulated. They've been pulled into me, 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 and all these things were, if I can find it again, these uh, things in this um, Native American um, legend. Anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self-pity, guilt, resentment, inferiority, uh, lies, false pride, superiority, ego, all these things and many more. We have got pulled into those states and they express themselves in human interaction to create expressions of themselves in human society. And if we did that and we went for joy, peace, Love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion. Fantastic. We would live in that world. So, like I say, all the people that hurl abuse at me, and there's lots that are very, very kind, um, but all those people that um, hurl abuse at me, forgive them for they know not what they do, because the system has them, because the distortion has them. It's an amazing concept, though, isn't it? Um, you know, to open yourself up, to meet people on that, that level where you leave your weapons at the door. Yeah. And, uh, you, you were talking about metaphorical weapons. Yeah. And, and be completely open with them and accept them for who they are, even if yeah. they've got flaws and things that you don't like. And that is an alien concept to so many. You know, uh, it was an alien concept to me for most Why? of my life. Because of the distortion. Yeah. You know, if, if, you know when, when I um, uh, took ayahuasca, um, the rainforest plant uh, on two occasions, especially the second occasion, second night, two nights running, or two nights out of three, I think it was. Um, no, two nights running, it was not even as. Uh, my mother was always like that, you know. She'd, she'd, she'd start <laughs> telling you a story, and she'd I go, just go off in tangents. Yeah, she'd, she'd go, it were a Tuesday. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. No, no, it were Wednesday, because we'd be washing on Wednesday. And you think, well, All this detail, start yeah. the story, you know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, and when I, when I, um, when I took the ayahuasca on the second night, I, I went to um, a place, a place, another level of me, as we all have other levels of ourselves, that was beyond this reality, beyond this distortion projected. And the scale of love in its deepest, most indescribable uh, state 
was just stunning. And I, I wrote a book as a result of the experience and all that I was told called Infinite Love is the Only Truth, Everything Else is Illusion. All that's going on in terms of attacks on the people's voice, attacks on me, or, what, or whatever, it's all an illusion. And an illusion only gets you if you believe it is real. And so, you know, all of us, we, we are living in the illusion, we're experiencing the illusion, and in the moment you can get caught in the illusion. But very quickly it's like, oh, hold on, illusion. You're caught in the illusion. And the more you do that, the less you're caught in the illusion, and the more this becomes your, your natural state. And, you know, people think that opening your heart and talking about love is actually, you know, sort of sitting cross-legged on a mountain somewhere, thinking, love, love. This love expresses itself in so many infinite ways. It's the love that um, people uh, express when they give their lives to relatives and others who are in a, it's a state where they can't look after themselves, but they, they do it. You know, I, I go into a cafe on the Isle of Wight sometimes. People talk, talk about me, oh, David, the pressure. There's no freaking pressure. Pressure's what you make it. You can overwork, yeah, but pressure? And there's a guy there, and he's in there, you know, a couple of three times a week, and he's, he's, I think it's his wife. She is in such a desperate state. She can do nothing for herself. She's in a wheelchair. She can't feed herself. She can't drink. By, and he's there, patient as anything, with her all the time, looking up. That is love Amazing, in, its, yeah, yeah. in its true sense. And another expression of this love um, is, is getting off your backside, getting up and saying, we're going to live in a nightmare world. When I, I'm in my 60s. I ain't going to live in it as long as most people alive today. Uh, but, but hey, who cares? We want to make a difference to the world they're going to live in. And, and you take the abuse and boom, boom, boom. When actually you think, oh, I'd love to go here and, and do this and do that, but I can't. Boom, 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 boom. So there are different expressions of this love. It's not all, you know... I, I feel love. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and, and in fact, there's so many people I've met in what you call the New Age arena, there's some lovely people in that arena, who talk about love, and yet they don't express it in action because they can't under, uh, overcome the fear of taking action um, and the co possible consequences of it. And so they use the theme, the, the idea of love, the symbol of love, not as a, uh, a mechanism for change and um, doing what you know to be right, but as a means of escape, of doing nothing, but just as the, uh, the robot radicals that are attacking the people's voice um, have to self-justify the fact that um, they are doing that when they should be cheering and clapping of what's being done. There's that self-justification. Oh, yes, yeah, self-helping, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. self-justification. So people who are using love as a form of escape have to um, persuade themselves that they have to ignore all the bad things going on in the world because that's negative and we have to be positive. And, and, and so they convince themselves that just by doing nothing, but I'm giving love, then they can justify to themselves um, uh, doing nothing. And, you know, I, I hear it said, you know, about people like me when we're exposing this stuff. Um, it's negative. It frightens people. And, and, and you know, what, what you get is, is people who say, uh, you know, like in the New Age arena, they say, we must overcome fear. And then they're saying, well, you're frightened. Well, what happened to overcoming fear? You know? <laughs> um, and I, like I say, um, one thing that is neg ne never negative, never negative, is knowledge. Knowledge is never negative. Ignorance is negative. And that's why the People's Voice is here, to um, challenge ignorance with information. Now, we've got about 60 seconds left. Um, any idea what we'll be talking about next time on The Doc Connector? Yeah, I'm going to um, go through a, a series of things uh, next time, uh, 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 ancient and modern, and show how they connect. And, and it explains why things are happening today that don't seem to be connected, but are absolutely connected. Everything's connected in the end.
Brilliant. Thanks for today. Cheers, Rich. That's fantastic. Remember, check out davidike.com, David's webpage. Check out the headlines there uh, for up-to-the-minute news and a different take on the news uh, that's being broadcast by the mainstream media. Um, these episodes will be up on YouTube very soon, and we'll be back next week with another David Ike Doc Connector. Until then, thank you and goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.